Hello again, dear viewers. Welcome to the Sovel Moss channel. As always, I'm Alexander Sudrev, Dmitry Alexandrovich doing office in the studio, and we continue the questions and answers section. Actually, the question itself is quite extensive, so I'll ask my colleagues to hand me the laptop where we will read it without distortion. Good section. As an investor, I have a question. Active world restructuring to meet the new technology level is underway now, and every day more and more electric car manufacturers are appearing. Whether it's China or California, why haven't any of the companies tried to cooperate with you yet, Dmitry Alexandrovich? If our motors are really so productive, colossally superior to the other existing developments in this area, then I believe that this should certainly be in their best interests since it will give them a huge competitive edge. And with their investments, the D&E will be built in, say, two or three months. Just imagine Tesla investing in Sovelmash. A good question. And, interestingly, it is a very typical one. The question itself has been articulated very interestingly and well because it clearly shows how double speak is deployed. Because we say one thing while meaning something else. We say the party and mean Lenin. We say Lenin meaning the party. The same is here. We say technology and mean motors, engines, electric machines. We say electric machines or motors and mean technology. Have you seen a good deal of motors? Slavyanka, Duinov's motors, have you seen a lot? Personally, I have seen not so many of them firsthand. Not so many. And the combined winding motors? There are significantly more of them, a hundred of thousands. So let's try to walk a mile in the shoes of decision makers. Well, let's say a company that makes electric cars. Here, for example, they bring me information that there is a technology, a good technology, that provides a lot of opportunities. Naturally, I will open it and ask what it is like. And the very first question I will ask is the following. Are the motors based on this technology that meets our needs and requirements produced? No. In this case, only one answer is possible. Well, how is this technology progressing now? Well, there is a modernization potential there, people rewind motors under license and so on. And what do we get from it? It doesn't suit us. It doesn't. There is also information that they are constructing a D&E there. What on earth is that? A design and engineering technology department that will develop customized motors and put them into production. I wonder if they will be engaged in producing traction motors. No, not only traction motors, the general-purpose industrial ones. So what? Well, we are completing the construction, developing attracting investments, and if it will attract additional investments now, it will go much faster, they will come into operation not in the second half of 2022, but in the fourth quarter of 2021. Then I wonder, if we provide funding to them now, will we get the controlling interest? No, we won't. And so, they won't be controlled by us then. We will to some extent influence the decision-making, but ultimately not. We pay now, they will complete the construction and develop motors not only for us, but also for others. And we will create our competitors with our own hands. Do we need it? The answer is again, no. What are we going to do? Well, if they pull through, stand on their own feet, 
If they start producing motors, then yes, we will try to buy all the motor batches so that our competitors do not get any. And every time they try to increase their capacities, we will purchase all the motors so that the competitors do not get them. Therefore, we will then have to be the first to enter into a contract with them. Exclusive rights. Exclusive right. Maybe we can start negotiating with them now? You must be kidding. They are going to skyrocket in this case. Do we really need it? So, we will wait. A Chinese proverb says, sit by the river and wait for a dune of water to float by. <laughs> so, whenever you want to delve into a particular issue, you should put yourself into the shoes of the one who is to take some actions. Why would they do that? Why would they do that? Personally, I wouldn't do that. Therefore, the actions that seem logical in layman's terms appear to be simply illogical, harmful through a business prism. And that is why no one will take such steps. Although many people know about this technology, and all modern manufacturers know about this technology. And after all, each of them is waiting for the patent expiration, and then they will be able to independently develop their own designs. Therefore, this is a race against time. But since everyone understands perfectly well that we have developments for the future, we are to be restrained. And one of ways to restrain is to defame. The second element of restraining is concealing and so on. And then bang, someone can't stand the tension anymore and starts running. They won't. Until we pose a threat. And that's when they will start acting. There is no way escaping this. Someone will be the first to lose their nerve, and the rest will follow. So it will be necessary to enter into contracts that are attractive both for us and for them, but at the same time all batches are needed. There is no other way. But to do this, we must reach a certain stage in our development. That's why they don't rush to us. I hope I've answered the question pretty comprehensively. Thank you. Therefore, always, dear colleagues, dear viewers, try to put yourself in the shoes of another person. And before you think, that someone did something wrong or did it incorrectly, walk a mile in their shoes and assess the situation from their point of view. Because every birdhouse has a different point of view. I once had two photos taken from the same point, taken from one place, but in the first case the camera was lower and in the other case it was one and a half meters higher. And here in one picture you can see the riverbank, beauty, trees, nature, beautiful. And the picture taken one and a half meters higher shows a broken asphalt road, a lane with a garbage dump, and a ramshackle fence covered with wild grapes. Two different shooting points and completely different pictures. When you go down, there is one thing, the rising warm air that covers the picture, that hides it, you don't see it in the picture. But when you go higher, you can see it. Therefore, it is necessary to take the position that allows you to see clearly. Moreover, as far as I understand, the psychology and the way of thinking that is used by, let's say, everyone involved in business, especially the big players, are extremely different from straight-line thinking. 
And this way of thinking has a sufficient number of intricacies. All the actions and tasks that are taken, that are performed, are not always what they seem to be at first glance. I generally prefer taking the straightforward road in relationships and in everything else. But I understand that real life is like that and it is taken into account in our actions. Thank you. See you again.